Hey there you guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel if you are new. If you are new, hi, I'm Abigail. I make Christian videos every week to help you guys let the truth be told over your life. And this week, um, I'm going to actually be going through Psalms 139. Now, this is a very um, well-known um, verse or book in the, not verse, not book chapter in the Bible, um, and we all know the verse that goes something like, um, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. That is a very popular verse that kind of gets labeled everywhere. I mean, you see it on phone cases, you see it on backpacks, on everything. Um, but this chapter has a lot more deeper meaning than just that. Um, so we're going to actually just be going through it today and I'm going to be showing you guys how um, I actually go through and read my Bible and what I do when I'm reading. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of jump into that. So starting out, I actually have this um, annotation and highlighting guide from coffee and bible time i don't know if you guys can see it it's not going to focus um but i use this just to get my mind rolling and just to be thinking about what i'm going to be reading at and before i even start reading i like to spend time playing my guitar i have my guitar up here um playing my guitar or i'm just spending some time in prayer just to really get my mindset and god you can use this time however you want to. You can use it to do your will through this time. Um, and just really inviting God into um, the place before I start reading. So I just have um, on this paper, it's got a little highlighting form. Um, and it'll tell me what I can be highlighting and what I should be looking for. So in purple, it's who God is, names, attributes, characteristics, and actions. So just basically who is God. Um, and green is the, what should I take? away from this verse what sh what is God trying to show me um, and yellow is just prayers in the Bible I think that's one of my favorite things is looking at is like how can I relate to this person like for example in Psalms David cries out to God so much and is just like God where are you I need your help and he's very honest before the Lord um, and then in orange I like to um, highlight the main ideas or a repetition of words um, for me you'll even see it when I'm going through Psalms is that I will n I try to notice things like if there's a word that's being repeated a ton of times I will take that word and I'll go look it up in the Hebrew translation and then um, it'll help me to even dig even deeper into it. And then blue is God's promises. Now that's something that I really love to highlight as well is just what is God promising in this passage? And it's helping to remind myself that God's promises are never changing and they always stay the same. So jumping into um, the my first read, I like to go through and read my the passage that I'm reading. In this case, it's Psalms 139. And I like to go through reading things, just finding little things that I noticed about the passage. Um, so in this particular passage, um, I noticed how much the word known or no um, was used. It was used over and over and over again. And so I took that word and I looked it up um, in the in a Hebrew definition. In Hebrew it means yado, which means to intimately know. And so when I was reading that, that was helpful for me to understand that it's not just that God knows you, because in the English, in English, when we think of no, you could know a baseball player and not actually like intimately know them. Um, and so that was a really good reminder for me is that God intimately knows everything about me. Um, and so then reading even further, I highlighted verse 15 and 16. Um, and in reality, that one was just like, it was so cool the way um, David had wrote this. And it was just like, God knew me before anybody else did. I mean, I was in the womb and he already knew who I was. He knew the person I was going to become and knew my personality before my personality was even shown. He knew my eye color before anybody else in the world ever did. And it was just so crazy to just think about how much God knows me. Um, and that was my first point. Through my first read, that was what I was really thinking, like, God just literally knows everything everything about me. So going into my second read, um, I 
actually um, boxed around verses 7, 8, and 9. And I wrote down, it says, you cannot leave God at all. He knows everything already. No need to hide. And I was looking at that path, that part in the passage and I was really thinking, God literally knows every single thing that's going to happen to you. He knows everything that's going to happen in the future. He, knew, he knows everything in the past. Um, and there is no need to run away from God. I feel like even if we look at Jonah, he ran away from God. We look at so many people in the Bible who would run away from God. And there's no need to run away. There's no need to hide. I mean, Adam and Eve in the garden, they hid from God because they feared what God would have to say. They had so much shame that they ran away. When God asked, where are you? He knew exactly where they were at. Um, and so there's no need to be hiding our sin and our failures and all of those things from God. Um, another thing that I learned as I was reading it through the second time is God intimately knows me. Think about that. He knows every sin I will ever commit. He knows every every thought that I have and any, any thought that is not pleasing to him. Yet, even though he knows all of that, he still loved me enough to send his son to die for me. And I think it's crazy because if if everybody on this earth, if we all knew, like, you know, your spouse, your sister, your brother, if we knew every single sin that they would commit, the likelihood of us loving them or them loving us is very slim because we all make mistakes. And it's so crazy to read that and go, even though I've made this many mistakes, God still chooses to love me. The little part that I was a little bit confused by that I had to read a couple of times, and it was from verse 19 to 22. Now, if you guys have read this verse, these verses before, you'd be kind of probably confused to why would David include that in this text about God knowing you and knowing you intimately? Like, I mean, just the way it was worded is weird. It's like, oh, that you would slay the wicked, O oh God. O oh, men of blood, depart from me. They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O oh Lord? And I do not loathe those who rise up against you. I hate them with complete complete hatred. I count them my enemies. Now, um, those verses, um, which is something that I was realizing is that the enemies are not necessarily people because God created all people in the image of him. The enemy is Satan. And so we need to hate Satan and hate sin as much as God does. So that was kind of what I was realizing through that because I was like, well, hey, your enemies. I mean, even in the New Testament, it says to love your enemies. Um, and so I was realizing that, no, it's to hate sin and hate the enemy as in Satan um, as much as God does. And I think that is something that is very challenging for me because we sometimes love sin. It's just the truth. We do. We love to sin because we continue to do it. Um and we can find pleasure from sin. Um, so that was something that was also really speaking to me as well. Now, something to take away from all of this was the last little bit in from verses 23 to 24. And it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there is... is and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me to the way of the everlasting. Now, I circled that and I wrote next to it, I said, it's an invitation to my heart to get rid of anything that displeases him. Now, what I mean by that is this was something that I've actually started adding into just my daily prayer life is I want to be inviting God in to where there might be some corruptness. I am in I am inviting God in to say, you know what, you can change me 
and you have have your way in me have your way in me and to be able to change me and clear out anything that is displeasing to you um and so that i just have added to my prayer is just god take anything away from me that you that is that displeases and dishonors you um whether that be a friendship a relationship a um a d dark sin that nobody else knows about take come in and gut me out um and I think that is a very difficult and dangerous prayer because search me and know me. Know my heart. Do we, like, when we're thinking about it, do we really want God to know our heart? Because if God knows our heart, he knows every sin, every lie, every everything. The thing is, is God already knows it, whether you want him to or not. Um, so I've just been really using that and saying, God, you know what? Go ahead and know me. You do already know everything, but change me th through knowing me. Use everything a part of me for your glory. Get rid of anything that displeases you. And I think the funny thing is, is when we think of dis what dis displeases God, we think it'll displease us as well. But in reality, it might please us, but displease God. And that is something that, that's difficult to um, wrap our minds around is, yeah, it might displease God, but it might also please you. You might be in a relationship that God's like, you need to get out. But you're like, no, I like it. So I'm going to stay in it. Um, so this is a really dangerous prayer to be saying, God, you already know me so intimately. You know what's best for me. You know the woman that I'm going to become in 10 years, not even 10 years, in the next day. So go ahead and use me and take anything that you want out of me. Just go ahead and take it out and use me for your glory. Um, so that is what... I um, got out of reading Psalms 139. I hope that you guys all enjoy this video and I hope that you guys will want to see more videos like this because I love filming these kinds of videos. Just they sit down and we're going to read through our Bible together. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and you guys can click. There is um, in one of these corners there is a little box and you guys can click the little circle and it'll pop down and you guys are able to vote on the type of video that you guys would like to see next. Um, so with that being said, I hope that you guys all enjoy your week and stay safe out there and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye guys.